There are now five Texas House Democrats who have tested positive for COVID-19 in Washington, D.C. One of those, San Antonio's own Trey Martinez Fisher. That's right. We have our very own John Paul Barajas just wrapped up a Zoom call with him just before the show. He joins us right now. That's right, guys. And the very first thing I asked him was how he was feeling. And in his own words, he says he feels great. He said he has a very low-grade fever, but he still did a workout and had a full day of work from inside his room with Zoom conference calls. But as you mentioned, five people did test positive. So I wanted to know if, in hindsight, leaving the state was worth it. This is what he had to say. I knew this trip was, was going to come with tremendous sacrifice. I also knew that it would come with a risk like this. But the quest for our democracy will continue uh, the, the future of our country when it comes to voting rights. Uh, we are that voice right now. As far as how he thinks their efforts in stopping the bill are going, he believes everything is trending in the right direction for them. He adds the Senate might have alternative ways of getting a voting rights package on the floor of the U.S. Senate, and that they will be there to rally that. He thinks they won't be back in Texas for at least 20 days, August 7th, when the special session ends, but that there's no guarantees on that date. We also asked about the governor's threats of arresting those who fled the state. The governor has been stretching the truth. He's been flirting with his truth. Uh, he is said that we're here on, on taxpayer dollars. We're not. Uh, he's telling people that we're here on a junket. This is hardly a junket. Uh, we are working even on Sunday. Finally, he said they'll be testing themselves every day until they know they're cleared of COVID. And for the time being, their work will be done virtually. Tim, Jaffney. Thank you, John Paul. Meanwhile, could another wave of COVID cases be on the horizon? It has become a major concern right here in Texas as a rise in case numbers of the highly contagious Delta variant continues to stoke fears. And as the Delta variant became the dominant strain of coronavirus in the U.S., Texas has seen a sharp spike in positivity and hospitalizations with Bear County making up its fair share. I am worried about what is to come because we are seeing increasing cases among the unvaccinated in particular. The numbers prove it. As the nation sees a rise in COVID cases, it's the areas with the highest rate of unvaccinated that have been hit the hardest. It's why health officials across Texas are upping their push for people to get vaccinated. As of the weekend, Texas positivity rate has climbed above 10 percent. It's the level Governor Greg Abbott and the Trump administration both identified as a red flag earlier in the pandemic. Saturday, the seven-day average for new confirmed cases in the state was just over 2,000. That's nearly triple the average since the first day of the month, which was 757. The number of those hospitalized across Texas growing as well. At the beginning of the month, there were a little more than 1,500. As of Friday, that number surpassed 2,800. The highest number of those hospitalized due to COVID at any time was back on January 11th, which saw more than 14,200. Here in Bear County, the numbers reflect what we've seen statewide. In just the past week, the positivity rate doubled from 5.8% to 11.2%. Last month, the average number of people hospitalized for the virus here at home was 123. At last check, it's above 250. While many cases are still being investigated, health officials nationwide are urging those who are unvaccinated to get the shot as the Delta variant has indeed raised the stakes. It is our fastest, most effective way out of this pandemic. As of right now, more than 1 million residents in Bear County are fully vaccinated. That's about 62% of the population. For more information on the vaccines, as well as where to find your nearest vaccination clinic, head to ksat.com. Turning now to other top stories we are following this Sunday. A person has now been charged in a deadly shooting at an apartment complex in the medical center. 43-year-old Tavares Anderson is now facing a murder charge. That shooting happened just after 2 a.m. at the Addison Apartments off of Babcock Road, not far from Wurzbach Road. Police say Anderson was drinking with three other people, which eventually led to some sort of an argument. Anderson told police a man allegedly came charging at him trying to fight. Police say that is when Anderson shot that man in the chest. So far, that victim has not been identified. Flames engulfing not one, but two neighboring West Side homes this morning, prompting a massive response. It all started around 11 a.m. in the 200 block of Segura Street. When firefighters arrived, they say they found one home fully engulfed. That fire soon spread to that neighboring home, causing significant damage. No injuries were reported. The cause of the fire still under investigation. Police say a 69-year-old woman is dead after she crashed her car going the wrong way on the highway this afternoon. That's on Highway 281. 
281. According to police, the woman drove north on 281, then took a U-turn on the highway as she was approaching Bassey Road. Officers say she then drove south in the northbound lanes and collided head-on with a Toyota Tundra near Hildebrand, causing a massive backup on the highway. Rescue crews had to cut her out of her small car. They took her to the hospital where she later died from her injuries. The people in the pickup truck she hit had minor injuries. Over on the north side, a family of four sent to the hospital following a rollover overnight. The crash happened just before 1.30 a.m. on Loop 1604. San Antonio police say the driver lost control, rolled several times before landing off the road. The driver was ejected. One passenger had to be rescued with the jaws of life. One one-year-old and four-year-old were in the back seat and suffered minor injuries. All were taken to the university hospital. Police are evaluating the driver for DWI. Earlier this month, I showed you how two cemeteries owned by the San Antonio Archdiocese had fallen behind on landscaping and other maintenance issues, leaving several families upset. Many of the problems were related to recent heavy rains we had, and a spokesman said they were working hard to clean things up. I promised you that we'd go back to check up on their progress, which I did this week. Here's what I found. It's tonight's Defenders Update. <laughs> I'm sure they can find some people that uh, they can hire to do, a, to do a better job keeping it up. The brother, I have to clean that out. Miguel Herrera, one of many people we talked to in May and June who were upset with the conditions at local Catholic cemeteries. San Fernando number two and three had become overgrown with weeds and grass, and heavy machinery used for burials had left these deep tire tracks in the grass and some gravestones covered in mud. That's why Herrera and others began bringing their own lawn care equipment when visiting their loved ones. And I even started doing some of the other people, but I said, God, you know. You could be here all day, right? You could be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> you feel guilty. Yeah, I, there's a lot of guilt uh, involved just leaving them like that. When I visited on Monday, we found cemetery crews hard at work and what appeared to be some additional crews helping them out. Many areas of the cemeteries were freshly mowed and trimmed. The archdiocese said in a statement that additional workers were brought in and groundskeepers are working overtime to catch up with the landscaping, but the weather wasn't helping. That weather also causing problems like this. Even though it's been rainy, crews have still had to perform burials, leaving some areas with deep trenches from those tire tracks. Church officials say the trenches are being repaired as the weather permits. Another problem still being addressed is sunken graves caused by the heavy rains. The Archdiocese says crews continue to locate, inspect, and repair the graves as they find them. Now, one more area of concern we saw was at this mausoleum. It had some significant sinking at San Fernando number three. The Archdiocese says crews have begun working in that area and it could take a few weeks or more for that work to be completed. We'll stay on top of the story for you and let you know as their progress continues to restore those grounds. Heading around Texas now, health officials are monitoring passengers who were on the same flight as a Dallas resident who was diagnosed with what's known as monkeypox. It's the first diagnosed case in the U.S. since 2003. Health officials say that he was on two flights, one from Nigeria to Atlanta, and on July 8th, another from Atlanta to Dallas Love Field, July 9th. The symptoms include fever, headache, exhaustion, and more. But unlike COVID, it can be transmitted until a person becomes symptomatic. With the COVID precautions uh, on the airplane, everyone wearing the masks and in the airports, everyone wearing the masks really uh, also uh, reduced risk for uh, transmission uh, through those droplets uh, in those settings. Monkeypox has been seen in humans since the 70s in Central and West African countries. As for those exposed to patient or to the patient, health officials are checking in with them twice a day, having them do temperature and symptom checks. Now over to Harris County, where officials there have ordered the closure of Six Flags Splashtown until further notice following a chemical leak yesterday, which sent 31 people, including children, to the hospital. As of today, all but three patients have been discharged. Some people had minor skin irritation and trouble breathing. Officials say that chemical leak contained a mixture of bleach and sulfuric acid. Hazmat crews are working to determine the cause of that leak. 
Many consider this the last known train robbery in Texas, and today was its 51st anniversary. We're talking about the Great Little Train Robbery on the Brackenridge Eagle. And just like previous years, the remembrances comes with a reenactment of the day back in 1970. But instead of weapons, zoo actors used bubble guns. San Antonio Zoo staff says it's a quirky event aimed to highlight the train's history while also raising money for it. It gives us the opportunity to let our community know like the events that took place that day. And so today serves as a, a fundraiser. The reenactment serves as a fundraiser to help support our Zoo Eagle train. In fact, Zoo staff says a new train is already in the works. The money raised will go towards maintenance and upkeep costs. And if you missed out today, don't worry. You can always ride the train during zoo hours. For more information, head to KSAT.com. Outside with live cam. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Certainly toasty out there, but a good weekend to spend a little time outside by the pool, maybe near one of our area rivers. So hope you found a good way to stay cool the past couple of days. Our almanac for today, 75 the morning low. That's spot on average for this time of year and a high of 92. A little bit warmer than the past couple of days, just by a degree or two. You likely didn't even notice. Thankfully, we're staying far away from our records this time of year, which are up above of 100 degrees, 104, the record high temperature for today's day. Coming up this hour in your weather forecast, we're talking daily rain chances through the end of the work week. There is a catch, though. We'll talk about that shortly. Also, the temperatures this week that come along with those daily rain chances. And coming up next half hour, a look at the Saharan dust outlook for the week ahead. Still to come on the night feed, an update to that late breaking news we first told you about last night. The latest in the investigation of a shooting outside of Nationals Park in Washington, D.C., which prompted the park evacuation during the Nationals and Padres game. Plus, a massive wildfire in Northern California forcing even more evacuations tonight as it blows up in size. The efforts to gain any ground on containment. And right after the break, we'll continue our coronavirus coverage with a look at how the rest of the nation is handling the surge in cases caused by the Delta variant. At KSAT Explains, we take one topic, add a team of journalists, and dive in. Then we stream it for free on KSAT.com and the KSAT TV app. Sometimes serious, sometimes fun, always interesting. Go beyond the headlines with KSAT Explains. Call Ideal Precision Roofing today or visit IdealPrecisionRoofing.com. Thirty years of hard work and dedication to fighting for those who need it most. When it comes to hiring a personal injury attorney, your choice matters. Thomas J. Henry, the name you know, the firm you trust. It's time to trade up to a new Kia from Ansira Kia on Pandera Road. Buy a Kia and get four passes from Splashtown, San Antonio's premier water park. At Ansira Kia, take your choice of a 2021 Kia Soul LX or a 2021 Kia Forte LXS for only $18,799. Come by or check us out at AnsiraKiaSA.com. Ansira Kia, number one in San Antonio, just outside Loop 410 on Pandera Road. I tend to take notice of the way home makes me feel. Hoping that the place where I spend most of my time is restful and inspiring, I design my collections of furniture and accessories to help you do the same. You deserve a home that reflects who you are and tells your story. And my goal is that these pieces will help you do just that. There's space to play, stay, ride, and slide at America's largest indoor water parks. Plan your summer getaway at Kalahari Resorts and Conventions in Brown Rock, Texas. Wide open spaces and lots of room to play. That's Cushada Casino Resort. Escape to Cushada and play the largest and most spacious gaming floor in southwest Louisiana with thousands of the newest, most exciting slots. Over 65 table games, live poker, and off-track betting. Plus, beautiful hotels, award-winning cuisine, and the number one golf course in Louisiana. This Louisiana's largest casino resort and Louisiana's best bet. 
So, Jimmy, what makes you an awesome different driver? Well, there's a lot to it. Man, it's a rush. So what makes home selling with OfferPad awesome different? Oh, so much. But with OfferPad, it's a lot more home selling stuff and a lot less bumping into people. I don't bump into anyone. Home selling with OfferPad is awesome different. Request your free cash offer today at OfferPad.com. In nearly every state across the country, COVID cases are on the rise. As we reported earlier, the highly contagious Delta variant is driving those numbers. Again, health officials saying the best defense against the virus, getting vaccinated. Yet, they worry misinformation, particularly on social media, might be getting in the way. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi reports from New York. Day after day, the Delta variant tightening its grip on the nation. Now responsible for driving up cases everywhere but South Dakota and Wyoming. Alongside Arkansas, the highest infection rates are in Florida and Missouri. This Delta virus is really a cause of greater concern. This is not last year's virus. Hospitalizations up as well in some COVID hotspots. They're admitting more patients than any other point in the pandemic. One Arkansas hospital now out of beds as admissions in the state surge by 80%. We're back into emergency mode. Unvaccinated Americans account for nearly all new COVID cases. The Surgeon General concerned that misinformation, particularly via social media, is fueling vaccine hesitancy. Stop and verify your sources before you post stories online. In Los Angeles County, with new cases up fourfold since July 4th, an indoor mask mandate is back in place for everyone, even the fully vaccinated. A decision the Surgeon General says does not conflict with CDC guidelines. In areas where there are low numbers of vaccinated people or where cases are rising, it's very reasonable for counties to take more mitigation measures. The FDA accelerating the review process to fully approve the Pfizer vaccine. Dr. Anthony Fauci says it could come in a matter of months. A CDC panel on vaccines also meeting this week to discuss booster shots, though no vote is scheduled. And in Florida, where the number of new COVID cases has nearly doubled in a week, pandemic restrictions on cruise ships remaining in place. Late Saturday, a federal appeals court temporarily blocking a previous ruling that would have lifted CDC rules. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Before we go to weather tonight, we have some uh, personal KSAT family news we want to pass on. You might have noticed Courtney has not been with us this weekend. Jaffney is right. here because Courtney finally had that baby. Amen. <laughs> See, Courtney and her husband, Clint, welcomed their baby girl July 16th in the early hours of 2.24 a.m. I tried to make this happen last weekend. I had her giggling throughout the show. I thought maybe that might <laughs> start things, but eventually the uh, baby wanted to come on Friday. Uh, oh Courtney did send along this uh, personal message. She says everyone is happy and healthy and we're already home from the hospital enjoying our first days as a family of three we are so in love and can't wait mm. to watch her grow the ksat family grows by one this weekend and jaffney will be joining us here on the weekends yes. in place of courtney as she enjoys her maternity leave and takes care of that baby yes i'll do it in honor of her with that special gift that i swear is nothing but a blessing ain't that right katie oh my gosh <laughs> so beautiful did you see her little nails yeah she yeah. already has very beautiful very little nails so cute a cordy clint and you're not watching because you're watching other things <laughs> yes. hopefully they're um, sleeping got their hands full right now i know i know all the best to them and daphne we're so glad to have you with us here so all right weather time Nothing that my forecast is not going to be as great as the baby pictures, but <laughs> top that. I will do my best.